I get this question a lot. Do I need a business plan to start a business? And this is a yes and no answer to this question. Do you need a business plan? Yes and no. It'd be nice to have a plan in place so you know where you're going, okay? So you have a goal in mind and you know the direction you're headed. But sometimes you don't need a business plan to get started. But if you feel the need to have a business plan, what I'd recommend is that you look at a one-page business plan. Now, if you go to my website at MaximumChange.com, there's video training. It's under the Academy selection in the menu, uh, the, Academy, the menu item Academy. You can learn how to write a business plan. And this is a full-on business plan. But what I want to talk to you today about is a one-page business plan. Now this is a truncated or pressed plan that you would write a larger plan for. So if you really need, uh, feel the need to have some sort of plan in place, I would recommend you do a one-page plan. Generally, I'd just say get started. If you have a product idea and you have a uh, solution to a problem, then, then get started. But if you feel the need to uh, have some sort of document in place, let me help you out. The very first thing that you would want to obviously have on this one page business plan is your product or service. Describe what it is. What is it that you're selling? What is it, the product or service, what is it that you have available? What is your widget? And you would want to lay that out in a couple of sentences. The next thing that you would want to offer is the problem that you are solving, the problem that, you're, uh, that the, the consumer is having and the solution you have to solve that problem. So what is the problem that exists in the marketplace and what is the solution that your product or service provides to that problem that exists? And you'd want to do that in one or two sentences. The next thing you'd want to do is figure out who your target audience is. Who the heck are you selling this product or service to? Uh, how old are they? What type of income do they have? Where do they live? Where do they shop? Where do they play? You want to have some sort of idea of who your target audience is. I like to call it your customer avatar. What does your customer look like? What is the customer avatar? So have some sort of target market in context. So that would be also a couple of sentences on your one page uh, business plan. Next, you would want to talk about who is your competition? Who are you competing against? Now, I want to be clear on this. You may say, well, there's no one in my neck of the woods, no one in my hood, no one in my neighborhood that I'm competing with. But you need to think much more broadly than this because we are in the age of the internet. And so you are competing with people that may not even be in your neighborhood. They may be in the next city over, they may be in the next state over, but you may very well be competing against them, particularly if you have a product that you can ship uh, that is not a, uh, a product that has to be picked up. Uh, definitely if you have a service that is uh, that you can provide over the internet or over the telephone, you're competing against people that are in a much more broad context than just in your neighborhood. So be sure that you think through who your competition is. And then what you want to do is come up with a competitive advantage. Now again, if you want some training on how to set up a competitive advantage, go over to my website, MaximumChange.com, under the economy, Academy uh, menu item. You can find a training on how to set up a competitive advantage. But your competitive advantage is basically what advantage do you have in the marketplace over your competition? What advantage does your product or service provide to the marketplace? What is your competitive advantage? Next, you want to look at your marketing channels. How are you going to market your product or service? Are you going to use traditional advertising like uh, radio, television, and print, uh, maybe billboards? Or are you going to go with the more modern versions, which would be uh, social media channels, um, Google AdWords, and so forth? How are you going to market your product or service? And certainly, where are you going to market that product or service? How often are you going to market it? and so forth. So make sure that you're setting up your marketing channels along the way. Now the next piece can be complicated for some people and that is your pricing strategy. How much are you going to price 
your product or service for, how, how much are you selling it for in the marketplace. Now this may require some research on your part. You may need to do some research and figure out what the competition is offering. You may want to look at similar products or services and start to look at what their pricing scheme is. And I would say to you that if you are doing your due diligence, if you're, if you're actually studying the marketplace and you know what the market can bear, then you have to decide, am I going to be a low price leader, kind of like a Walmart of your product or service, or am I going to go for the high ticket? And just understand that when you go for the low price leader, you're going to have uh, probably more um, income, more customers, so there is the need to figure out, can I service this many customers? Um, when you have the high ticket, when you go for the high ticket priced product or service, you're going to understand that you're going to have less customers, but you're going to have more revenue. So make sure that you understand your pricing, your positioning in the marketplace for that pricing. And then finally, I would encourage you to set up some goals. Now, goals are really important when you are uh, setting up a business. You have to have goals in place. Goals like how much money you want to make, in what period of time do you want to make that money, how many units of product are you selling, uh, how many customers do you want to service in your service business, what are your goals. It's really important that you have goals. And then you'd want those goals to be what I call SMART goals, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time. Specific in that you want to say exactly what it is that you want to accomplish. Don't be vague in your goal. In other words, you could say, I want to be a millionaire. Or you could say, I will be a millionaire by a certain date and time. Okay? So that's being specific. Measurable would mean you can measure when that's going to happen. When is it going to happen in a span of time? So specific, measurable. Measurable can also be that you measure how much money is in your bank account. So you can measure the, um, measure the level of your deposits. Actionable. Can I actually achieve this goal in the time that I've set forth? So in other words, you could say, I am going to be a millionaire by midnight tomorrow night. Can you actually achieve that in the time that you've set? Or are you going to say, I am going to be a millionaire in five years and this is how I'm going to do it. And then you have steps on how you're going to achieve that goal. Realistic. Again, realistic goes with the achievable. Is it realistic that you can achieve this goal? And I also, I often use the example of your favorite sports team. If you say my sports team is going to win uh, the national competition, so if it's the NFL, it's the Super Bowl, you, you would say my team is going to win uh, the Super Bowl, for example. Now, if you're an armchair quarterback, the question is how realistic is your goal to winning the Super Bowl if you have no way of uh, interacting with the team, if you're not on the team, if you have no way of moving the ball forward on the field. So the question is, is it really realistic at that point? The next one is time. Do you have to have a time limit on your goal? And again, I, I mentioned uh, being a millionaire in five years. Now it could be that you have a five-year goal and you accomplish it in one year. Good for you. It could be that you say, I'm going to be a millionaire overnight, and it takes you five years. You have to be able to time the, uh, the goal. When is the, when is the goal uh, done? And that goes back to the measurement point as well. Can I measure it? Yes, I can measure it in time. What time am I going to achieve that goal? So make sure you have goals and objectives. Now, goals are not enough. You have to have steps for each one of those goals. And those are the things that you're working on day in and day out. So I hope this has been helpful to you. A one-page business plan is certainly um, something that you could do in place of a larger business plan. Again, if you want to build your own business plan, you can go over to my website at MaximumChange.com and go under the Academy uh, menu item. And you, there's a whole uh, training on how to build a business plan, and there's a template there that you can download to build your own business plan. So I would encourage you to check that out. 
Um, I hope you're having a great day. I'm here to help. I would love it if you would please comment on this video, like this video, share the video, follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Follow me and interact with me. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what kind of business you're running. And I'd love to hear your business questions because I would be more than happy to answer those questions here in a live video on Facebook. Again, I hope you're having a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.